for joining us this week for another episode of Exalted Higher. I am so glad you tuned in and I'm sure you'll enjoy my guest this week. Grammy nominated and stellar award winner Calvin Bridges is celebrated as a living gospel legend. Calvin has inspired countless listeners and is considered one of the most innovative gospel singers of modern times. Now celebrating a 40-year career, Calvin has performed around the world and given concerts and music workshops in more than 17 countries. His personal conviction and faith shine most as he presents the gospel in music, which makes his ministry unforgettable. So sit back and relax, and let's join my conversation with Chicago's very own Calvin Bridges. Now you you have a, have a, been around in the gospel music um, field for a number of my years. My first recording, my, my first, first production was in 1979. Okay, we're not going to give our ages away here. <laughs> We've been knowing each other for well, a I'm long glad to be time. here. Let me tell you. <laughs> glad to be I'll tell upright. Right? <laughs> you know the alternative, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Rather be, what is it so many Seen said? and not viewed. Yeah, seen and not viewed, exactly. Yeah, right, yeah, so I touched on this a little bit, but let's talk about that. You're celebrating 40 years, mm -hmm. and there is a new release coming out, but let's talk about the 40 years where you started and how you got to where you are today. Musically, it started for me at a little church called Spirit of Love. Uh, Pastor J.E. Cruz had a young choir of fiery young people and fiery adults as well. And uh, a man named Reverend Walter Veal got me to go over there one Sunday. And I sat in and played and talked to the pastor. Long story short, I became the minister of music there and probably about two, five, six years later, uh, we were approached about recording. So I did my first recording with them, and it was released on the Birthright label. Uh, Reverend Milton Brunson, which I was also working with the Tommies, took my project to Los Angeles, to Birthright Records, and they liked what they heard, and they signed me. And that was the start of that. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And so, how? How, how many recordings have you had over the years? I would say probably of my own, probably about five or six. Uh, but you've I've been, been on other people's yeah, records. I've been on other projects. people's records. I've written for other people. I have some very successful songs. Uh, I Can Go to God in Prayer, which is pretty much a standard in the gospel field, particularly with choirs now, recorded by so many different people, um, notably Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir, uh, Ann Nesby, Dr. Bobby Jones, Alicia Keys used it in her 2008 World Tour, Luciana Pavrotti in the Boys Choir of Harlem recorded it in Central Park uh, years ago. So it's and the Oslo Gospel Choir has recorded it along with many other you know local choirs and groups. So that was a, a real blessing for me. And uh, I did the Grammy Awards with Albertina Walker. I think that was like maybe 86, 87, and she sang my song "Spread the Word." Yeah, Amazing. so uh, that was a real blessing writing for Tina. And then I have some very successful songs uh, over in Europe, the most notably probably Celebrate and In Your Arms, recorded with Oslo Gospel Choir. Oslo Gospel Choir, they're, they're pretty happening. I mean... Uh, uh, they're the number one gospel choir in Europe. Absolutely. And they awesome. tour all over. And uh, Toro Os is their choir leader and my writing partner. Does some phenomenal things. And uh, I, just, I just love them. Now, you're, you are, you weren't when I first knew you, but you're an ordained minister now. I Tell am. me how you made that transition from, oh, actually you're still involved in music, but what made mm -hmm. you decide to go in that direction? Well, I, I think it was in the beginning when I really started writing gospel music, um, it just seemed that it was a need to study the Bible more uh, in order to write songs for God. and. Uh, I heard the pastor of the church, Spirit of Love, say one, one Sunday, when we pray, we talk to God, but when we read the Bible, God speaks to us. And man, it pricked my ear in such a way that I've been in church forever, but I'd never heard it that way. So I says, I want to know what God is saying to me. And it's, that's when I started reading the Bible. So 
it grew from there, the writing. And uh, well, I was in fellowship one night and I heard a sermon by Dr. Evie Hill called The Hog Pen Trail. And I knew from that point that that message was about me to give my life really to ministry and to, to preach the gospel. And uh, it began from there. And uh, now, you know, I struggled for many years after that because I never had the unction to be a pastor or to preach in church. And uh, the Lord later opened up to me that he had sent me out to the nations and that my ministry was in music and in writing. So I became reconciled to that and felt good about it. And because it's, it's kind of odd having the title, but then it's, are you a pastor? No, I'm not a pastor, you know. But uh, I have sheep all over the world, so I give God praise for that. And that's what music ministry does. Um, it is the gospel in a different form. Absolutely. And because it's connected to music, it transcends all attitudes. Absolutely. You know, it really does. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it speaks directly to the heart. You're singing to the souls of dying men. My mother says that Absolutely, all the time. especially when they don't really know the language. Absolutely. You know, but they understand the emotion, they understand the anointing. As you just said, it speaks to your heart mm -hmm. when it is sincere, you know. I attended a friend's baby dedication this past Sunday and it was at a Romanian church. Mm. And I don't speak the language, for obvious reasons I don't, but I sat there and felt as though the Holy Spirit was talking to me, was ministering to me, mm -hmm. because it's, we're one. Yes, that's right. You know, and, it, and right. it ministered. I sat in the back of the room when his wife was singing and I just mm -hmm. cried mm -hmm. because it just was just so, so beautiful. Absolutely. not mad at you And he's not disappointed His grace is greater still Than all of your own choices He is full of mercy He's ever kind Here is invitation His arms are open wide And you can come as you are With all your broken pieces And all your shameful scars The pain you hold in your heart You can come as you are Louder than the voice That whispers you're unworthy Hear the sound of love A story shattering your darkness and pushing it through the light. Tenderly, he calls you, his arms are open wide, and you can come as you are with all.
faces and all your shameful scars the pain you hold in your heart just bring it all to Jesus and you can come as you Your ministry has taken you pretty much around the world. Well, so far, 17 countries, and uh, I believe in God for, for whatever he has next. You know, I just pray, ask God to allow me to finish my assignment. And uh, Now, you're not going just to sing there. Are you doing workshops? I'm doing teaching? workshops. I'm doing teaching. I'm also preaching. I'm, as a matter of fact, my next time out in October, I'll be bringing the Sunday morning message at the at the church, at the congregation, as well as doing the workshop. But I do a lot of workshops uh, with various choirs and groups, you know, all, around the world. That's pretty. That's pretty awesome. You know, you've had also a few awards and nominations. Mm -hmm. A couple of them here or there. Let's talk about mm -hmm. that. Tell okay. me about a couple of them. Well, I thank God. Most notably, I was nominated for a Grammy for the Spread the Word song, and it was just such an, an honor and joy to be able to perform that song on the Grammys. Um, I have won two stellar awards. Um, my first project out uh, for the birth, for the I Am label was uh, Renew My Spirit and the song from there was Chosen. I won Best New Artist for that. Then followed up a couple of years later with a, a song that was originally released on the first project, Spirit of Love. It was a duet called Save Me Lord. And I won Best uh, Male Vocalist for that. So I got two stellars and a Grammy nod and and uh, some other things, but you know, I'm giving God praise. Let's talk about um, Chicago Praise Ministries. Yes. Now, what is that and how are, how are you involved in it? Chicago Praise Ministries is a gospel music arts ministry that I started in 1995. We chartered in 1995. I was just looking at those papers the other day. And it came about because, um, you know, it, it, the, the, the gospel is free, but it ain't cheap. <laughs> Okay, so uh, in order to facilitate uh, the travel, and, and at that time I, I had a, a large choir of about 20 to 30 people, and to do robes and to do events, uh, we would always seek corporate funds, and so I started a nonprofit called uh, Chicago Praise Ministries, and uh, our goal is to teach the gospel through song, through word ministry. Um, we've been involved in Stop the Violence Movement and in parent advocacy with the Chicago Public School System and things like that just to uh, have a voice or footprint in the community. Um, but primarily our goal is to teach the gospel to the nations and uh, a, a word that's politically correct now but it, um, it just, it's, it's about who you are in Christ and that is inclusivity you know, to uh, mm -hmm. say to the nations and to the cultures that uh, uh, God loves all of us and uh, as we get to know him and know more about him. You know, in that song, Come As You Are, I'm glad that, that mm -hmm. you mentioned that song because I, I feel it important that I have to say we all can come as we are. But it's also important that we allow God to mold us and make us into the image of Christ and not stay as we are. You know, sometimes we use that as a license to say, well, I'm this and I'm that and I'm, yeah, you know, but uh, God wants us to become more like him. Absolutely. Uh, more like his dear son. So uh, I, I thank God for that, that avenue and that road. And that's, uh, I write m almost all of my material, but I think I was in Texas or Georgia. I believe it was Texas. I heard Come As You Are on the radio. Really? And girl, I cried like a baby. <laughs> uh, so your music comes back and administers to you. Oh, God, yes. I can't even do it if it doesn't minister to me. Absolutely. You know, if it doesn't, it starts here. If it's, if it's nothing here, it certainly can't be much to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? yes. So I, I said I wanted to record that song because the message was so strong. And I could really see myself in that. You know, there are times when you're in ministry that you feel lonely. You feel uh, rejected. Um, 
um, unappreciated. <laughs> you know, you get in all of those places, and uh, uh, and then if you are not careful, you will begin to look and say, well, so-and-so and so-and-so is doing this, and they're doing that, and you'll get your eyes off a of focus of what God has told you to do. And uh, God in his grace is always his amazing grace will always gently say, you know, come back to me mm -hmm. and let me show you, let me teach you, let me lead you. Mm -hmm. I'm here for that. And uh, I just give God a mighty praise that that's what my whole life has been and my ministry has been, which is why I'm not tired yet. <laughs> I'm not tired yet running for Jesus. Well, you're not going to retire. That's one of the songs on the, on the new project. Too. Yes, yeah. But you're, but you're not going to retire. You're no, gonna, I, you know. You're just going to sing your way. I ahead have and... no thoughts of retiring. The only way that I'll retire is if I have no voice mm -hmm. and no movement in this body. Because mm -hmm. I was made to praise Him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know, My mom would that. say, as long as you keep moving and that, keep honey. praising That's Him, it. you're going to be just fine. Yes. You're going to be just fine. Yes. Well, we're going to take a little bit of a twist here. Okay. And I sometimes with interviews do a, do what I call rapid fire. Uh, that's where I'm going to throw out a few questions at you, oh, okay. and you don't have to think about them. Well, one of them you might have to think about it, mm -hmm. and uh, and then uh, let's see how you do with this. Okay, tell me what your favorite worship song is. My favorite worship song would probably be "Lord, Prepare Me to Be a Sanctuary." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And why? Uh, because it's when you're a sanctuary, you are the uh, uh, abode for the Holy Spirit, and when God's presence, when you got God's presence, you got fullness of joy. <laughs> so when you got God's presence, you got everything that you need. Uh, You're going to make me just go in and That's all right. <laughs> we can go in. You know, I right. give God praise for that. Which gospel artist ministers to you most? Mm, in this day and age, I would probably think that would, I mean, I got several. But I mean, Kirk Franklin's music ministers to me a lot because it is uh, such a heartfelt experience. And even though to many in the church community it may be draped in controversy or whatever from time to time, but it's always transparent and it's always to the point. And uh, I really like that. Yeah, what a life. Mm -hmm. um, if you could sit and have a conversation with anyone in history, who would it be and why? Well, of course, my number one would be Jesus. <laughs> Good answer. Absolutely. Absolutely, positively. Um, just having that connection with the Father, um, that very intimate connection. You know, Paul says, I want to know you in the, in the fellowship of your suffering and the power of your resurrection. So to know that we are supernatural beings, that we are spiritual beings, and to understand the access that we have that is outside of this earth realm is a mighty thing. I'll bring it back in now. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. I'm going to make you take it out again. Oh, wow. Um, Keeping the, the song Come As You Are in mind, mm -hmm. would you pray a prayer for us? Absolutely. To our viewers. Certainly. Somebody that might be struggling and they don't, they've lost their way. Yes. Or they're, they're, they're being tempted by the world, by the cares of this world. Yes. Say something to them with that in mind. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, first of all, we come to say thank you, God. Thank you for a voice and a heart and a mind to praise you, to bless you. Then, Father, you have set us free by your word. For who, who has the Son is free indeed, Lord. So, Lord, I want to share that relationship. That's what it's all about. It's about relationship today. You can come as you are because God loves you so much. There's a parable about 100 sheep, and one of them was lost. And so Jesus says, if you have a hundred sheep and one is lost, would you not go after that one and leave the 99 in safety? So you may be that lost sheep today. I know I was at one point. And the Lord's hand just stayed upon me when I wanted to go to the left or when I wanted to go to the right, when I wanted to choose the wrong thing. He always gently brought me back, made me realize that I belong to him. You belong to him today. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what shape your life is in, God loves you still. He loves you still. Even with your bad choices, he loves you still. And he will always be there to embrace you. I say he's the only one who knows everything about me. And he still loves me. And I want to tell you today, the greatest prayer any of us can ever pray, 
is, Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. But when we pray that prayer and we mean it and we give it a self, we open the door wide to all that God has in store for us. For the word of God says, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans of peace, plans of good, plans to give you an expectation and a hope. And that's what your destiny is when you say yes to Jesus. So come, don't delay another minute. Come, and then you'll be able to, you know, when we give God the praise, he gives us the victory. When we worship him, he gives us the victory. So when you do that, when you release your life and your will and your desires to God and seek him truly, repent, turn from what you know is not pleasing to God, then you watch God move and turn your life around. I can tell you because I know he's done it for me over and over and over again. Hallelujah. But that's the goodness and the grace of the Lord. Father, we give you praise for this time of sharing and for this blessing for this platform. And God, use it mightily for your glory and for your honor. We give you the praise, Father. And we know that a miracle is being worked in lives who see this broadcast, who see this telecast. Touch in Jesus' name. Have your way, Father. Amen. Amen. Okay, now you're bringing the tears on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Calvin, thank you so much. Hallelujah. Thank Bless you, you for being with us. Um, tell everybody how they can get in touch with you. I am reachable on every medium that you can possibly think of, probably some that even off the planet Earth. <laughs> Excellent. You can certainly connect with him <laughs> off of our website, um, exaltedhire.com, and um, Facebook, social media, the whole nine yards. Calvinbridges.org is my website, and uh, Calvin Bridges US is uh, Instagram and Twitter and all those kinds of things. See, I'm still crying. And <laughs> I, I, I had to hold mine back. <laughs> God, we seek your face, asking for amazing grace. Come refresh our weary souls, for in your presence we are made whole. Crying out to you, give us strength to make it through. Oh, yes, so much trouble in the land, flesh and blood can hardly stand.
Father, we're crying out to you in our cities. We're crying out to you in our homes. The jobs are going away, God. Men and women are trying to make it, Lord. 